a Japanese fairy tale. The tale for today, the Ogre of Rashomon. A long time ago, in Kyoto, in Japan, there was a band of samurai knights that were renowned for their great might and power. Kyoto was at this time in question the capital of Japan. Across Japan was various gates leading in and out of cities and areas and such. One night, the band of fierce samurai knights were sat around the old table, nestled on the tatami floor, drinking sake and eating a meal. One of the samurai began to speak of a tale he had heard from an elderly woman. He mentioned that at the gate of Rashomon, the word on the street had it, that there is an ogre that is taking people at twilight through dusk. One samurai named Watanabe blurted out that it could not be true, as their master had led them into battle against the last of the ogres in Kyoto, upon the mountains, not so distant of a time ago. The others looked upon him and said, If you are so sure, then you should go check it out. For a moment, Watanabe grew concerned, then his brave and gallant personality kicked in, and he said, I shall. Everyone wanted evidence that he would be so willing to go alone and check. So each member of the band of samurai knights placed their surnames on a parchment. Watanabe said he would nail the parchment to the door, and they could all go in the next morning to see it placed upon the gate. Despite the fact there was a fierce storm, and the wind howled and screeched like pigs going to slaughter, and that the rain beat down like the pounding of a falling oak, Watanabe drew the reins of his horse, and attached his katana to his armour, and placed firmly his helmet upon his head. For a brief second the band of samurai thought he would succumb to fear at the ferocity of the storm, of which no normal person would dare to brace. Nonetheless, Watanabe rode into the night, and the wind berated he and the horse, the rain as cold as ice, the night as dark as a cavern. The thunder and lightning roared and lit the way toward the gate. He arrived, and just as he thought there was nothing there but the gate, he stapled the parchment to the gate. He began to ride home to his fellow samurai knights and brothers, when suddenly a giant hand latched onto his helmet and stopped him in his tracks. He felt around to find that it was a thick arm, as thick as a temple pillar, and had hair as coarse as a brush littered upon it. The stench was also overwhelming. At this moment, with knowledge of the battles he had fought upon the mountain, with his master and samurai brothers, he became alert to the fact it most certainly was an ogre. He drew his sword as fast as the lightning struck, began slashing furiously at the ogre's arm. The ogre's grip released and a battle ensued. The lightning casting silhouettes of a ginormous ogre and one brave samurai battling for their lives. Watanabe had battled ogres before, yet never alone. His heart pumped with passion to protect the folks of Kyoto and to seek glory for his band of samurai and to claim the head of the ogre as proof of his battles. The rain pounded, the blade of the katana making more bellowing whipping sounds than the wind itself. Soon the ogre began to realize that this was no average samurai. That Watanabe had gallantry that his swordsmanship was incredible, so the ogre began to flee the battle. Watanabe, enraged by the cowardice of the ogre, set to chase him. The ogre, the size of the gate itself, had great stride, and so soon outpaced him. He, disappointed that he had not slain the human-eating ogre, returned to the gate to his loyal steed. As he approached the horse, he noticed a large object strewn on the floor in the flickering light of the storm. 
it was the ogre's arm. He was elated and began to tie it with rope to the back of the horse. As dawn struck, he approached the center of Kyoto, dragging the ogre's arm with his horse. The samurai brothers and master were astounded and so very proud of his gallant efforts. They set a feast for him with fish of all kinds, cooked in all manners and even raw. They celebrated his efforts with sake and shochu and many assortments of entertainment. The whole of Kyoto had already known that this band of samurai knights were fierce and had a protective spirit, yet now there was a samurai who would fight ogres alone. He became renowned, his notoriety extended across Kyoto like a bushfire, people paying to see the arm and praising his greatness. Yet in time he became worried that the ogre would return for the arm, as ogres are very vengeful and possessive. And so he had a great box of timber and steel made to lock the arm away. He then had them place the box in his own bedroom and sought to never let anyone see it in fear that the ogre would snatch it. Then one cold and stormy night, not unlike the one of which he had faced the ogre on, there came a knock at his gate. The maid attended to the gate and found an old woman scratching at the door. The old woman said, I am the master Watanabe's wet nurse. I nursed him since a child. I heard of his great exploits and sought to it in my final hour to congratulate my sweet child of yesterday. The maid rushed to the master Watanabe and told him of her at the gate. Watanabe was void of all sense and concern for the nature of her late call at night, as he was overwhelmed with nostalgia and love for his wet nurse. She had been more like a mother than anyone else, and he had deep feelings of love and adored her kind and gentle soul, and so the gate was opened. Luckily there was no sign of the ogre in the stormy night, and the gate was closed behind her. The old wet nurse hobbled into the lobby and proclaimed, My sweet child, you are a great hero of Kyoto. I heard of your exploit this night and had to rush to congratulate you. This brought a serene elation and smile to Watanabe. The old wet nurse went on to say, I so desire to see the ogre's arm. Watanabe replied, These days no one can see it. It is locked away. Then the old woman went on to whisper, I am old and soon I will pass. This is as certain as the light of a new day. Please allow me this favour. I have in all my days wished to see such an anomaly and freak of nature, such as the arm of a demonic ogre. Watanabe, endeared by her gentle voice and earnest appeal, agreed. As the box was unchained and unlocked, the wet nurse seemed to tremble in fear. The wooden lid was removed and she nervously hobbled over to the box. With every step closer she took, she seemingly was stricken with more fear. When suddenly, the old woman transformed into the ogre. It was not fear, it was excitement. The ogre snatched the arm and began swiping it furiously at Watanabe. Watanabe was emotionally overwhelmed by this meeting and for a moment, petrified. Then, as he was flailed across the room, he instantly came to his senses and drew his katana as fast as he did on that night. The ogre, seeing the light of the lamp shine upon the katana, was overwhelmed with fear and leapt through the ceiling, chortling with a menacing laugh and madness as the ogre had reclaimed his arm. Watanabe was disappointed that he had trusted the ogre and not anticipated a shape-shifting power that some ogres are known to have. He sat down as the rain dripped through the ceiling and stared onto the moon. 
the light of a new day came in. Watanabe remained respected for his swordsmanship, yet he always felt disappointment that his heart was so supple and susceptible. He waited at the gate of Rashomon for another chance, frequently. The ogre, fearful of Watanabe's might, never returned. Thus, Kyoto was saved.